We want to welcome you to the service on this uh, wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning. And what a blessing it is to be able to come to you today. We love our Calvary family. And uh, listen, this is not ideal. I think we would all agree with that. But thank God that God has given us the technology and the opportunity to do this. And so for that, we are very thankful. We have so much to be thankful for today. And uh, listen, we want to encourage you to like and share the broadcast and comment. And uh, man, we're just, we're just thrilled to be coming to you today. And listen, we've got a great lineup for you. And we're not going to be lengthy, but uh, this is going to be a super meaningful time. We've got great music lined up. We've got a message lined up from the Word of God. And so I want to encourage you right now to go ahead and grab your copy of the Bible we're going to be getting into the Bible here in just in just a moment. And so again, we welcome you today. Thank you for uh, for being a part of uh, of this service. Of course, we do have a lot of sickness in the church right now. We do have some COVID, and uh, thankfully, we don't have as many as some. Uh, I guess uh, in some respects, we have a little bit more than others. And so, listen, we know this. We know God has a perfect plan. And so far, everybody is bouncing back. We're thank, uh, thanking the Lord for that. Uh, we want to, my wife and I want to say thank you so much for your prayers for us. And we're definitely heading in the right direction. And I'm just so glad that I'm able to come to you today. I appreciate Brother Brandon filling in and standing in the gap for us this uh, last Wednesday. And so we're thankful. We're just so thankful that we can come to you today and just enjoy a little time together as a church family. And so we welcome our Calvary family and all of those who may be tuning in today. Uh, we are so glad to have you aboard. And I'll, I'll tell you this, that just as soon as possible, we're going to be back together again as a church family. We love it. And we're just so thankful for what God, God is doing at Calvary Baptist Church. And so again, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a great day today. And uh, we're trusting that the Lord will use this time of broadcast to be an extra special blessing uh, in your life. Well, listen, uh, one of the things we're excited about today is we're going to use our own content, and uh, we thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing at Calvary as far as our live stream is concerned, and also just um, our video and, and our tech department, and just a lot of different things. And the Lord is blessing us. So we're going to do our best. Now, you'll have to bear with us a little bit today, but we're going to do our best to use some of our, uh, some of our own, some of our own uh, content today. And uh, listen, we've got some wonderful songs lined up for you. And so we're going to play a song right now. And then as soon as this song is complete, we'll come back for a very brief message. And then right after the message, we're going to dismiss to another song and give you an opportunity to just fellowship over the uh, internet for just a few moments as we're leaving the air today. And so again, I hope you'll hang in there. hope you'll turn up your volume right now. Give me just a, a moment to make the switch, and, uh, and then we'll get right into this new song. All right, into this next song. Again, it's great to have you aboard today. Thank you so much for tuning in.
Amen. Didn't you enjoy that? Aren't you glad today that you know the master of the wind? Well, I want you to take your Bibles this morning, if you will, and I know that this is different for us, but I want you to grab your Bible. I've got my Bible right here before me today, and I want you to turn over to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number two, if you will, and I'm going to see if I can take us to uh, the split screen today. And there we go. And uh, Matthew chapter number two in your Bibles. And I want to talk to you about this subject today, what we learn from the Nativity Star. Now, I know that we're well out of Christmas, but uh, back during the Christmas holidays, we were just really studying up uh, on the Christmas story. God began to give me a series of messages and these are just, they're just way, they're just way too important to skip over. And so I know again, I know that we're out of the Christmas holiday. Uh, but uh, listen, I think this is going to be a great blessing to you today. So look, in, if, if you will, at Matthew chapter number two, and we're going to read verses one through 10 today. Matthew chapter number two, verses one through 10. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east that are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, um, uh, and, and uh, verse number uh, four, let me read it again. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 8 is where I am. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him... Bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Could we do this today? Could we have a word of prayer this morning? And then I'm going to jump right into this Bible study today. And so let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to help us today. Father, we thank you for your blessings. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to our wonderful church family today. And thank you for giving, this, this, giving us this great uh, vehicle of technology, Lord, to be able to reach out to uh, most, if not all, of our families today. And God, I pray that you'll bless our discussion, fill us with the Holy Spirit, and I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ would receive glory and praise and honor from all that's done today. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. And all God's people said, amen. Well, I love this story. And I want to talk to you this morning and even tonight, I want to talk to you about this subject and what we learn from the nativity story. We took a little time in our church the last few weeks and we talked about what we learned from the wise men. And then we talked about what we learned from King Herod. And so today, all day today, and maybe even Wednesday, I want to talk to you about this subject, what we learn from the nativity star, from the Christmas star. Now, one of the things that I noticed about uh, this story uh, that I think so worthy to point out is I noticed that these men, these uh, wise men, were crisscrossing Jerusalem, and they were asking people a certain question. And I'm interested in that question. They were asking this, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And I'd never noticed this like I noticed it the other day, and God showed this to me. But you know, church, what a great question to ask. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? And you know that, that you and I as God's children, we are to be the, the wise men and the wise women that are asking people this same exact question. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now, where is he? Is he in your heart? Is he in your home? Is he in your family? Is he in your job? Is he in your individual life? And I can promise you this, that you'll never have a satisfied life until he, 
the Lord Jesus Christ is in your life. And I just want to go ahead and say real early today, if you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, oh, listen, I want to encourage you to give your heart and life to him today and allow the Christ child to come into your life. As I was thinking about this nativity star, I was thinking about sometimes God allows us to have the opportunity to to see some amazing things in the heavens uh, for instance, I was thinking about the northern lights. Some of you have seen the northern lights or you've seen pictures of the northern lights. I don't know how many of you know that much about it, but listen, if you will, to some scientific facts on the northern lights. The light show that we see from the ground is caused by electronically or electrically charged particles from space entering the Earth's upper atmosphere at a very high speed. Now listen to this. These particles originate from the sun. The sun is constantly pushing out a stream of electrically charged particles called the solar wind. And this travels out from the sun, I love this, at between 180 and 310 miles per second in all directions. As the earth travels around the sun, a small fraction of particles from the solar wind are intercepted by the planet. Around 98% of these particles are deflected by the Earth's magnetic field and continue their journey into deep space. A small percentage of particles leak through the Earth's magnetic field and are funneled downwards toward the Earth's magnetic north and south poles. When these charged particles hit the atoms and molecules high up in our atmosphere, they become excited. Now, this creates two glowing rings of auroral emission around the, nor- around the north and south magnetic poles known as auroral ovals. As they decay back to their original state, they emit distinctive colors of light. It's this light we see when we look at the northern lights. Now, again, I'm just, I don't know about y'all, but how many know that science proves there is a God And just amazing, as I was reading that, and I was thinking about, uh, and if you've ever seen video of the Northern Lights, it is an amazing, amazing thing to see. I was thinking about, to many of you know, you've seen a solar eclipse. Others have seen a lunar eclipse. Uh, Some of you have seen the appearance of a comet from time to time, or maybe a falling star. That's always a, a very unique thing. Uh, to see is a falling star, or maybe asteroids that are burning up as they break through our atmosphere. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, this thing, this nativity star was not only unique because it was amazing in its appearance, but my dear friend, it was it was supernatural in its appearance. This uh, Christmas star was supernatural, or maybe I should say divine, in its appearance. I love this. Don't, 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 don't miss this. I, I looked up that word star in Matthew chapter two, and it's the Greek word aster, A-S-T-E-R. We get a word from that in our English language. It's called asteroid. And this word aster means to strew. Now follow me. It's the word S-T-R-E-W, to strew. It also comes from a word that means positing. Positing, P-O-S-I-T-I-N-G, positing. I didn't know what that meant. I had to look it up. And it means this. It means to suggest. It means to strew. And then it means to suggest. And man, when I read that and studied that, I, I got excited about that. And this is what I believe personally. I believe that this nativity star, I believe that it uh, that it strew a trail or left a trail behind itself one that these wise men could follow. Uh, It's suggested, which is what it means. It's the idea of a suggestion. It suggested a track for these wise men to follow. Why else would the Bible say in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 9, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Think about that. Went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And so I love this little study we're doing today, and and I hope that you'll be with us this morning and tonight as we try to just unpack some wonderful, wonderful truths about this nativity star. Now, can I just give you the opener today about this uh, star? How about this? I want to put this on your screen. Number one, we notice 
that this star could serve as a picture of the rapture of the church. It could serve as a picture of the rapture of the church. There's a lot of pictures of the rapture throughout the Old Testament. And I believe that this star could definitely serve as one of them. For instance, let me give you some of those. Uh, The catching away of Enoch in the book of Genesis uh, is a picture, I believe, of the rapture of the church. Noah and the ark could serve as a picture uh, or a symbol of the rapture of the church. Elijah and the chariot of fire. How many remember that story where Elijah is uh, caught away by a chariot of fire. That is, I believe, a picture of the rapture of the church. How many remember the story over in Genesis 18, Genesis 19, where Lot and his family were taken by angels out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, a select few of his family were rescued. Well, I believe that can serve as a, uh, as a picture of the rapture of the church. And I also believe that the nativity star the story of the Christmas star could most definitely serve as a picture of the rapture of the church. Now you say, Pastor, how in the world do you come to a conclusion like that? Well, I'm glad you asked. And I want to share some uh, similarities today, if I could, between the nativity star and the rapture of the church today. How about this? Number one, we notice only a select few saw the star appear. Now look back at your Bibles at Matthew chapter two and look at verse number two. The Bible says saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Notice this, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. You know, one of the first things that I noticed, one of the first things that the Lord revealed to to me about this uh, nativity star is this, that not everybody saw the star. Not everybody saw the star. Now, you would think that if there was something this amazing that was happening in the heavens, you would think that everyone would have saw it. You would have thought that man, uh, man, great crowds would have saw this spectacle and they would have been following this trail that was left behind by the star. But the truth of the matter is not everyone saw the star. And I send that to say this, not everyone will see the rapture of the church. Now, I believe this, I believe that they'll feel the effect. But I do not believe that everyone will see the uh, the rapture of the church take place. Now, you say, Pastor, uh, why is that? Well, going to give you a few thoughts today. <clears throat> Number one, because of its lightning fast occurrence. Listen to what our Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. In the twinkling of an eye. That word twinkling is the idea of a beat. The rapture of the church will happen faster than a heartbeat. Now, I know some of you have heard this before, that the the air the airbag in your car deploys at one thirtieth of a second. It happens at 200 miles per hour. And did you know, my dear friend, that the rapture of the church will take place faster than the deployment of the airbag in your car. It will happen in a stroke. It will happen in a beat. And so there will be many who will never see the rapture of the church simply because of the lightning fast occurrence. But there's something else. I believe that people will not see the rapture of church number two because of its location. Its location. What do you mean, pastor? Well, the rapture of the church won't take place on the earth. It'll take place in the air. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, listen to this, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the rapture of the church won't take place on the earth. Now the second coming of Christ will most certainly take place on the earth, but the rapture of the church will not. 
It will happen, my dear friend, in the air. And I don't believe that all will see the rapture of the church. I'm going to be quite honest with you. We believe that the trump of God is going to sound. Jesus is going to come with the shout of the archangel. But I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure that all will hear that trump or hear that shout of the archangel. You say, well, preacher, something that loud. How could someone miss something like that? Well, did you know that right this very moment, there are sound waves that are all around you and all around me, and yet you can't hear them. And the reason you can't hear them and I can't hear them is because we don't have the right receiver. If you had the right receiver, you could hear those sound waves. And my dear friend, I believe this, that one of these days when the rapture of the church takes place, I believe those that have been born again by the grace of God, those that have accepted Christ as personal Lord and Savior, I believe that you will have the right receiver, and I believe that you will hear the trumpet sound, and you'll hear the shout and the voice of the archangel. And so you say, Pastor, this nativity star, how is it How is it uh, in any similarity like the rapture of the church? Well, number one, uh, only a select few uh, saw the star. But let me give you something else. Number two, I wrote this down. Number two, uh, those who saw the star were looking for the star. Did y'all notice that? Uh, those who saw the star were looking for the star. This wasn't something uh, that was earth shattering that arrested everyone's attention. Uh, quite honestly, friend, not everyone was looking for this nativity star. It was the furthest thing from their mind. Uh, Matthew chapter two, verse two says, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And by the way, we believe this after careful study, that the reason that these Magi saw the star is because they were looking for the star. And the reason they were looking for the star is because they had been involved in study of biblical prophecies. Uh, these men were, were studying about that star. I believe this. I believe these Magi. I believe that they were believers. And I believe this. I believe that it will be believers who see the rapture of the church. Uh, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And how many remember the story of Elijah, Elijah the prophet, when he was caught up by uh, by a chariot of fire? And uh, you can go there. You don't have to go there. But in 2 Kings chapter 2, and verse 9, one of the things that we notice about this interesting story is that Elijah was looking for that chariot of fire to come. He was looking to be taken away uh, into heaven. Now, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah the prophet was looking for this chariot of fire to appear. And my dear friend, as children of God, we ought to be looking for the rapture, for the imminent returning of Christ, which means that he could appear at any moment. The rapture of the church may take place at any moment, any second. And if you're watching this broadcast today and you're not ready, if you've never trusted Christ as Savior, oh, I want to encourage you to repent and give your life to Jesus today. Open your heart to him and let him come in and save your soul today. And so, number one, only a select few saw the star. Number two, those who saw the star were looking for the star. But there's something else that I want you to notice. Number three, we notice this, that when they saw the star, it drew them or pulled them away from their present location. Look at Matthew chapter two, verse number one. The Bible says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east 
to Jerusalem. That's believed that these wise men came from probably Persia or Babylon, and that it probably took them at least a year to make their trip to Jerusalem. It was a long, long ways. It pulled them a long, long ways away. And truly, the word rapture is not found in Scripture, the word, but the teaching of the rapture most certainly is. Let me read for you if I could. Second, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say in you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now listen to verse number 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Now, if you like to mark your Bibles up, I want you to underline those two words, caught up caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That phrase, caught up, is the Greek word harpazo, and it means this. It means to snatch. It means to claim for oneself eagerly. To seize is what the Bible is saying there. And we believe this according to the Word of God, that when the rapture of the church takes place, that the Lord Jesus Christ will pull us from this place to be with him in the air. May I remind you again of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. How about Revelation chapter four? We believe that John the apostle was speaking of the rapture of the church here. Revelation 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Listen to what the apostle John says in verse number 2. And immediately, John says, and immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. We believe that uh, that Enoch was a picture of the rapture in Genesis chapter 5. And listen to what our Bible says in verse number 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. For God took him. Uh, oh, listen, I believe that this rapture is going to be an immediate thing. It's going to be a sudden thing. And I want to point this out to you as well. This star which I believe is a picture of the rapture, led them into the very presence of the Savior. Now listen to Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. Oh, this uh, star brought them into the very presence of the Son of God. And my dear friend, I believe this. I believe one of these days that God is going to call his church away. And I believe that this, this uh, event, the rapture of the church, will call us into the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Someone said it like this. There's a man in yonder glory I've loved for many years. He has cleared, cleared my guilty conscience and has banished all my fears. He's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and no time will be allotted for you to utter one goodbye. No time to kiss the husband or embrace the loving wife if they are but united in the bonds of holy life. Are you ready, Christian, ready for shout and trump and voice? Will his coming make you tremble or cause you to rejoice? Are you walking, talking with him daily, taking him your care? Do you live so close to heaven that a breath would waft you there? Wow, that's a good, good question, isn't it? Well, I'm so glad, my dear friend, that you tuned in today. And uh, listen, I want to do this. I want to put our prayer helpline number on the screen today. If you're watching this broadcast and you don't know for sure that you're ready for the rapture of the church to take place, well, you can be. 
And we would love to share the gospel with you. We'd love to share with you how the Bible says we're sinners in need of a Savior. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of that sin, there's a penalty that we have to pay, and it's the penalty of death and ultimately hell. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But I've got some great news. Romans 5, 8, the Bible says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And my dear friend, if you're willing to open your heart to Jesus today, he would love to come in and save your soul and uh, take you to heaven when you die. Our Bible tells us in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Christ as Savior, open your life to him, call upon him Listen, tell him how sorry you are for your sin. Ask him for forgiveness. He'll give it. And and ask Christ to come into your heart and life and save you today. Oh, he wants to save you. He wants you to be his child. And so I encourage you to do that. If we can help you with anything uh, along that lines, I hope you'll reach out right now, 704-327-5662. And if no one answers immediately, be sure that you leave a callback number and we would love to call you back. If you're watching today and you've got a heavy, heavy burden on your heart, be sure you call us, and we would love to pray with you. We'd love to do that. All of our uh, all of our Calvary family, man, we love you so much. I'm so glad you've been able to be a part of the broadcast this morning. And here's what we're going to do before we leave the air. We're going to dismiss to another song, and I believe that you're going to enjoy this. I believe you're going to enjoy this great song. It is. It really is a great song, and I rejoice as I put it on there. And then, Lord willing, we'll be back with you tonight at 6 p.m. And so I hope that you'll stay tuned and share the broadcast and encourage others to watch and listen. And we're going to talk a little bit more tonight about this Nativity Star and some wonderful things that we can learn. And so I hope that you'll be with us. I hope that you'll be with us. Well, listen, enjoy the song. We love you, and we'll look forward to seeing you tonight, later on tonight. God bless, and take care. Thank you.